Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo and this is part eight of the ultimate smart home guide for 2020. So far we have discussed what is a smart home? What are the benefits of a smart home? What kind of smart home devices are there? How do we control these devices? Automations, connection types, and hubs. If you haven't seen those videos yet, there are links in the description below or you can go to techtechandmoretech.com. If you have seen those videos and you found them helpful, consider hitting that like and subscribe button to help out with the YouTube algorithm. In this video, we're gonna discuss ecosystems, which is kind of like how your devices all interact with each other. By making a product that works with the ecosystem, it will then ensure that that product then works with every other product that works with that ecosystem as well. The big three consumer ecosystems are Amazon Alexa, Apple HomeKit, and Google Home. There are also hub level and manufacturer level ecosystems like Nest or Ring or SmartThings, but they all integrate up into uh, the main three. There are also the ecosystems like Home Assistant and OpenHab, but these are much more DIY, so I wouldn't really put them up in that same sort of category as the big three consumer ones. There are also proprietary control systems like Crestron or Control 4, but these are usually found in new house builds and are usually very, very expensive and aren't really consumer smart home ecosystems. Back to the main three uh, consumer ecosystems, they're each controlled by the largest companies in the world, Amazon, Apple, and Google, which all have about as much money as several small countries. But more importantly, they each have their own voice AI. You've got Alexa, Siri, and Google Assistant, and these companies have bet big that you go with their ecosystem for your smart home needs. Let's start with Amazon's Echo lineup. These are easily the most popular and widely used smart home speakers, and in fact, they actually have a 70% market share of smart speakers. Now, Alexa is the most versatile and widely compatible out of all of the different voice AIs. Manufacturers will work to make sure that their device is compatible with Alexa by creating what's called a skill, and then they can put a sticker on their packaging that says, this device is compatible with Alexa. Alexa is quickly moving forward with their own lineup of smart home accessory devices like smart plugs, for example, and I'm sure eventually they will expand onto smart lighting and other things like that. So what this basically means is if you buy one device that says works with Alexa, and then you buy another different device that also says works with Alexa, you will know that those two devices kind of work with each other. The Google ecosystem is also rather robust as it has the best voice AI, and it has an almost equal level of device compatibility as Alexa does. And lastly, there is HomeKit, which is Apple's ecosystem. They definitely have the least amount of compatible devices, which means that if you wanted to build out an only HomeKit home, you can still have it, but the amount of devices you get to choose from is severely limited. Additionally, Siri is also lagging behind in terms of functionality compared to Alexa and Google Assistant. Now, why are ecosystems important when building out a smart home? Well, for one, like I mentioned, it means that if you buy devices that say they work with, you know, all three ecosystems, then you know that those devices are going to be able to, you know, speak to each other and be automated and work well together. Versus if you just buy a device that, you know, only works with Google Assistant and then a different device that only works with Alexa, well, now those two devices can't communicate when there are options out there that have compatibility with multiple ecosystems at once. My general rule is to avoid limiting yourself to a specific ecosystem and try to build out a smart home that is as ecosystem agnostic as possible. This means trying to buy devices that are compatible with all three ecosystems or at least all the ecosystems that may apply to you. This will basically ensure that if one of the companies decides to change the way they work or they change their policy to something that you don't like, well, now you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of new stuff. You can just stop using Google, for example, and switch over to Amazon or vice versa. Ecosystem level control is also very convenient because it means that you can use a single app to then control all of your different devices, have all your automation set up in there, and basically just have all, everything live in one place. The last thing you want to do is to have to have different automation set up in different applications and have to jump back and forth from app to app to control different devices. Okay, so which ecosystem is the best? It sounds like Alexa might be the most obvious answer, but not so fast. To me, the biggest limitation of Alexa is that it doesn't live outside of your home. What I mean by this is all Android users have Google Assistant. All iPhone users have Siri. There is no phone that Amazon has that is just Alexa and Alexa services. 
Most people don't use Amazon's web services outside of Amazon Prime, which means you probably don't use any of their email services, you probably don't use their photos, and you don't use them for taking notes and reminders. This means that their overall integration with the rest of your life doesn't really exist outside of your home. If you use an Android phone, going with a Google Home based ecosystem makes a lot of sense because the amount of additional sort of tying in thing and synchronizing is very minimal because everything is already tied to your Google account. For iPhone users, it's a harder choice. Using Siri on your phone to control your smart home devices is very convenient and it works really well. But because of the limited amount of devices that are HomeKit compatible, when building out a HomeKit home, you have to be very strategic because there are definitely gaps in the smart home lineup. Additionally, when it comes to voice AI at home, the HomePod, which is Apple's only sort of smart speaker, is hardly a competitor to the, you know, the Nest Hub or to the Echoes, mainly because it's about three times more expensive and because it's not nearly quite as good. Additionally, because of the price and because of the size, it's much less likely you're gonna have one in every room like you can easily accomplish with Echo Dots or Google Home Minis. Now, I also mentioned hub-level ecosystems like SmartThings, for example, and these are definitely just as powerful because they can sort of amalgamate all the different apps and manufacturers you have. They're good for automations. And SmartThings specifically integrates seamlessly into Alexa and Google Home, which means you also get the benefit of the voice consistent. There are also third-party apps on your phone that can control everything and set up automations all at once. Uh, these are apps like Yonomi or Home Control or Home Plus, but these will not be able to directly interact with voice control, so that's just one thing to consider. So to wrap up, ecosystems definitely have their advantages. It's easy to have everything connected in one place. It ensures multiple manufacturer, multiple device compatibility. And it also means that you get that nice benefit of being able to control everything from your voice. However, given the choice when shopping for a new smart home product, I would tend to go with the one that is compatible with as many different ecosystems as possible. The next and final part of the Ultimate Smart Home Guide is going to be networking and security, something that is often very neglected when creating a smart home, but I think is very important. So stay tuned for that in the next episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. What kind of ecosystems do you guys have in your smart homes? Do you stick with one? Do you have a DIY solution? Let me know. This guide is being released on a Monday, Thursday schedule, and there's only one video left, so be sure not to miss it by hitting that like and subscribe button and checking that little notification bell so you don't miss out on the last part of the Ultimate Smart Home Guide. And until next time, see ya.